ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट आवर सेशन द सेशन इज कंटिन्यूएशन टू द प्रीवियस ट्रांसफार्मर्स इन द फर्स्ट सेशन इटसेल्फ नील सर हैड एक्सप्लेन्ड वेल एक्सप्लेन द कांसेप्ट ऑफ द ट्रांसफार्मर्स एंड ही डिड अ मेजर फोकस ऑन encoder part of the transformer clearly with illustrative example right now in this session i'm going to take you to go through the pathway to the transformers what is behind it before the transformers an idea and we'll enter into the transformer again with another example illustrative example and i'll take you to the decoder part as well am i clear it seems to be a little bit encoder part it seems to be little bit similar topics and repetitive but it's not repetitive sir had explained very well the mathematical part i'm going to show you in a visualized way he told you to read the paper attention is all you need and he said a word also it is a little bit difficulty to understand so he suggested you to read read again and again right i'm going to help you i'm going to make your job very easy by taking a repetitive part of this encoder session again with another illustrative example this will make you easy to understand the paper very clearly so you just listen i'm going to show you this concept in a more visualized way you just have to focus your attention on listening this that's sufficient afterwards i'm going to end up with right if you see what i'm going to cover in this session as i told you i'm going to show you the pathway to the transformers so i'm going to start with the encoder decoder framework and then with the attention mechanism and then we'll take you into the concept of transformers and we are going to see how the self attention mechanism working within this transformer with an illustrative way which includes the mathematical components all together and then i'm going to introduce the concept of hugging face framework in order to implement the concepts and the performing the tasks obviously we need of the tools and the libraries hugging face is a beautiful framework that we can use for implementing this all nlp and transformer talks right and i'm going to show you introduce the concept of and the framework of hugging face how to implement these concepts and i'm going to end up with the a small case study that is called text summarization these are the objectives of this session let's start our journey with basics right so to understand the concept of transformers first we need to get a clear picture about three things one is encoder decoder framework second is attention mechanism and the third is transfer learning these three are the core components of this transformers let's have a look on all we had heard about this one just have a look on this one each one by one we know very well we just saw this what is this encoder decoder framework architecture that's what we are using in our right now in our transformers but not in the transformer it's already been existing since recurrent networks but the question is if i ask you how this encoder decoder architecture is different from the rnn encoder decoder architecture and becomes more dominated in the world of computer vision what is your answer for this one yes it is using transformers in a short answer this encoder decoder architecture using attention mechanism already we had this encoder decoder architecture with rnns but this encoder decoder architecture is different from that rnns encoder decoder architecture it replaced that rnn encoder decoder architecture and became popular in the field of computer vision the answer for this is this encoder decoder architecture is using attention mechanism that is the answer short answer it's not a, such an easy thing to deliver it so 
what exactly the meaning answer if you want it is a long answer that's what i'm going to show you right now so prior to transformers as i said rnns recurrent networks those are rnns and lstms were straight of art in nlp tasks we had studied this recurrent network concept in the last session right what is the main important thing in the recurrent networks is the this feedback loop it feedback the information that is nothing but processed information in the name of this state in the name called state it will keep preserve the processed information at the current time step and will give it will feed it to the when it is processing the word in the sequence at the next time step t plus 1 so that the recurrent networks are beautiful perfect in training the sequential data you know very well about the sequence it comes in order recurrent networks are best suited for processing and training and learning the sequential data but there was a major problem with the recurrent it was started with the rnn what was the drawback with the rnn that you found sequential it's processing sequential the problem with the rnn so that we came into the vanishing gradient before that before that yes one problem is the vanishing and exploding gradient is the one drawback another one is short term dependencies it can't remember the long sequences clear it is going in a sequentially when it processing the particular word in a sequence at the time step t it will consider the state of the network which was processed the previous just before word previous word in the sequence at the before time step t minus 1 if your sentence is very long and the most important information is there at the beginning of the sentence will it carry that that's what short term dependencies and because it is involving all the time what it is involving is a multiplications matrix multiplication operations when you are back propagating through time these multiplications leads to the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients in order to overcome this problem a variant of recurrent neural networks were introduced what are those lstm long short term memory units there a gated mechanism was introduced with the four gates can you say what are the four gates just you have to recollect forget select update and output on a selection basis it will forget the information which is irrelevant and store the information which is relevant and whatever is stored i found relevant will be saved and will be processed for the sent for the output thus the gated mechanism was introduced in the lstms and one more important point along with the hidden state state information what is there in the recurrent networks it maintains another state what it is called lstm state another state cell state exactly you just recollect that picture at the top line you can see that cell state what is the job of the cell state can you see already have the state h along with the c is also there what is the use of that what are the operations it involve yes whatever the selection based this gated mechanism is doing selecting forgetting the irrelevant and selecting keeping remembering the relevant and passing saving and passing to this all these operations output of these operations will be sent to the this cell state which involves only element wise multiplications this is major important hidden state ht is maintaining matrix multiplications 
cell states will maintain element wise multiplications that is the reason why it is able to avoid the problem of vanishing and exploiting gradient issues that raised with the cnns what is the reason for vanishing and exploding gradients during the back propagation when the multiplication point 1 multiplied with the point 1 again what will be the result point 01 what happened the parameter value reduced when it is repeatedly goes it almost close to zero what is the meaning of parameter value zero there is no learning no ability to learn anything that's what called vanishing gradient all these things because of the hidden state operations which are the matrix multiplications but right now in my lsi i am maintaining the cell state which is having the element wise multiplication only so did i get rid of that problem this is how the vanishing and exploding gradient problem was overcome in the lstms which had happened in the rns right okay so thus these beautiful recurrent neural networks played an important role before the transformers in order to perform all the nlp tasks such as the sentiment and analysis so text classification text summarization and all these things but still there is a problem yes it is long term dependencies able to remember but still it is a challenging task for the recurrent networks when you feed the input which is a paragraphs or the documents of data am i clear remembering two three sentences or can you suggest to tell us one story which is of six, six lines of paragraph yes i am able to remember if i tell if i show you another one pdf document can you remember this one the same is the situation so still it is a challenging task for the recurrent networks to process the sequence data which is of too lengthy like a paragraphs and the documents of information so then the researchers come up with the solution that is called let us see how it is the problem with the concept called machine translation if you take an application of the machine translation look at the encoder decoder architecture of the nlp task machine translation just have a look on this one this is the encoder block and this is the decoder block this is a sentence which is translating transformers are great is going to be translated into some another language like a french or something just have a look at on this architecture internal it is having all the rnn units so that it is able to process the sequential data successfully right but what the problem here it is just have a look on it what is the decoder block input output of the encoder block is a single state information which is given to the decoder block even though it is processing the entire sentence in a sequential order finally from the encoder to decoder what it is going is single state information it is nothing but the compressed representation of the entire sequence of course here it is a four word sequence you just imagine about this a paragraph of sentence which is of having uh, 2000 words right if it is compressed into a small vector how much of information it is going to carry to the decoder part obviously information is missing that's what the challenge here it is called information bottleneck getting my point okay we are just talking about the machine translation task when you are implementing with encoder decoder architecture the weakness with this architecture is information bottleneck because it is carrying only a compressed single state of output from the encoder to the decoder part so what is the solution for this a way out of this problem is attention mechanism so what we are doing in the attention mechanism is in the attention mechanism what had happened is this decoder block is given access to each cell state of the encoder part 
Did you capture the difference with the previous architecture? Decoder block is given access to each cell state of the encoder part. So that it is capturing all the information throughout the entire sequence which is fed to the encoder part. So that information bottleneck problem was overcome. Am I clear? But what is the problem here is using this attention mechanism is look at this architecture in even encoder plot or decoder plot still what I am using is RNN cells. So operations are going on sequentially but I want these to be parallelized because my computations are becoming more increased when I am processing when I am trying to train the RNN networks. I wanted to get rid of this problem right now. Getting clear? Okay. I started using attention mechanism but still I have another problem. RNN cells if I use. So what I am going to do right now? Can you guess? Already we had in the morning session. Any guessings? Sir so told you what are the two components? Yes. We are going to replace this RNN cells with the feed forward neural networks. So that my computations will become parallelized. As I am using the recurrent networks, the sequential representation only is to be done. And the computation must be sequential so that it is increasing. So the way for this problem is self-attention. Is it clear? We started with encoded decoder architecture within the with the RNN cells and the problem is information bottleneck then we introduced attention and the problem is sequential computations now the solution is self attentions ok right let us have a look on what is this now we came into the main concept that is called transformer encoder decoder architecture with self attention mechanism. Now you understood what is the self attention? Either of the each encoder and decoder blocks have the access to each and every state. For the encoder you are feeding the input sequence. This will be given to each of this feed forward neural network parallelly, not sequentially. And the decoder is having an access to all the hidden state generated by the encoded part and giving it processing to the next layer is feed forward again parallelly not sequentially. This is the beauty and the actual mechanism behind the transformer. Hope I am clear. Right. So I told you three things to understood. One is encoder decoder framework. Second is attention mechanism. Hope we understood clearly. Now I left over with one more to better understanding define the concept of transformer that is transfer learning itself has a meaning. What is the meaning? Learning to be transferred. So a model trained on a huge corpus will be used for the downstreaming tasks to perform a specific focus task of your database of a small size. Pre-trained models will be used which were trained on the huge corpus of data set. Say suppose let us take an example. Yes, in the last session of CNN we discussed this pre-trained models. Can you remember any? VGG 16, VGG 19, ResNet 50, LENet, WordNet. What are all these are? pre-trained models which were trained on the huge set of images which are of high quality of high dimension images. Now those pre-trained models will be used for my data set of whether it is the Coco data set or Flickr data set for captioning the images. It is a small size. In a Flickr data set, you can see the images of 300 by 400 pixels. Or else, you, I can use the same model for 
identify and uh, capturing my image. What is the concept behind this? This I am using the pre-trained VGG16 model which was trained on the high capacity, high resolution images and using for my task, it is a small task of captioning my image. The knowledge which was trained, gained by the model were used and transferred to downstreaming tasks. The same we are going to use even in the transformer models also. Thus, these three are the more important core components we need to understand while going into the concept of transformers. Hope I am clear, right? See, if this picturally, if you want to do a better understand, you can have a look on this one. How, what is exactly the transfer learning is? You get me. This is on domain A, a model was trained which is used for the predict, doing the predictions on domain A. Generally, let us let's have a look on the supervised learning. This is the model A which was trained on domain A and used for predictions on model A. Predictions on A only. And here is one more model, model B which is trained on domain B and used for doing the predictions on B. That is what the supervised machine learning applications are ANN application. But coming to the transformer, what, how these are going to be used is, this is the model which was trained on domain A and used for the predictions A. But this model was divided into two components, you can see here body A and head A. Divided into two parts, body part and head part. Now I am coming to my concept of building a model which will work on domain B using the transfer learning. I can take this body part of this domain A, the model which was trained on domain A, you can see here. For getting the model of domain B which works on the domain B, this you can see here body A, but the head is mine only head A, sorry body B, uh, body A and head B. The means what is this body and head is the top layers. The top layers are useful for processing features. My features is to be given to the pre-trained models, right. Already trained model knowledge will be transferred to the task which is need to perform the predictions on model B. This is what the transfer learning concept. Okay. Now we have to understand how the self attention mechanism works in the transformers. Say suppose we wanted to build a simple chatbot application which takes an input sequence why transformers are better than LSTMs and has to generate the response and the target output is they use self attention. This is my task. Am I clear? I wanted to build a simple chatbot which takes an input text why transformers are better than LSTM and has to return the target text they use attentions. How can I implement this using this transform? Obviously, I need to go with the encoder decoder mechanism. Precisely if you say this is the way input sequence will be given to the encoder part. This will generate process this encode whatever the input sequence is given into some sort of internal representations. Then this internal representations will be given to the decoder part that will generate the output sequence that is my target is they use self attentions. It is a concise way but behind everything is what we discussed in the morning session. I will take you through that. Okay. As a first step how it will be done is this input sequence why transformers are better than LSTM will be divided into tokens. There are, these are all the tokens generated for this sentence. Now this tokens which has been generated will be given to the embedding layer of the encoder part, right. What is the job of the embedding layer? It will generate the embed vector for the input sequence which is given to it. It is a meaningful representation of the 
all the words in the sentence, right? Let us say suppose my embedding vector is of length 5. Morning we had a discussion is of length 5, 12 and 12,000, triple 8 or something 3, double 8, right? For a simplicity, I am taking the embedding vector of length 5. So, each of my token in this sentence sequence Y transformers are better than LSTMs being converted. Are these words directly converted into the vectors? No, they are tokens. Just remember the previous step. First, the sentence was tokenized. Those token vector was fed it as an input to the embedding layer. For each of that token, now it has generated embedded vector. Now, this embedding vector will be given to the next layer of the encoder that is called positional encoding. We had discussed the concept of positional encoding. What is the purpose of the positional encoding? Do we need a positional encoding? Yes. Let us have a look on just already we discussed but it will be. See is the sentence why transformers are better than LSTM this is my sentence. If I replace interchange those two words transformers and LSTMs how the sentence would be? Why LSTMs are better than transformers? The entire meaning of the sentence was changed. Total different meaning is there. When you are processing the machine has to capture that. Did my machine will capture this order of the sequence without positional encoding? Why? I am not using RNN cells. If I have used this RNN cell it will preserve the order because RNNs are best at processing the sequential data. I am not using RNN. For us these two are the different sentences for machines these two are the same because it is not no matter of order for that machine. Then how to get rid of this? Positional encoding. Right. So, what is this positional encoding is? For each a vector, embedded vector generated for each word in the sequence, one positional vector will be calculated. That will be added to this encoded vector of each token in this input sequence. And we discuss how to calculate this positional encoding also. Can you tell me what is the size of this positional encoded vector for this same word? Same as embedded vector. My embedded vector is of length 5. I have how many tokens in my sentence? 6. What is my embedding? Total embedding layer output size? Total embedding layer output size for the case. I have 6 tokens in my sequence and each token is of 5, embedding size 5. What is the total size of my embedding layer outcome? Size, not the number of 5 by 6 only, na? sorry, 6 by 5. 6 tokens, each token is of embedding size 5, 6 by 5. Now, my positional vector for each word is also 6 element vector, right. Now, this positional vectors, we have already seen how these position vectors will be calculated. For this, researchers introduce the, uses the formula called sine and cos wave representations for calculating the position vector of each word in the sequence. We had a discussion in the morning session how to calculate elaborately. I am going to give you a summarized way. This picture will give you a representation. This is the formula. This POS is the position of each word or the token in the sequence on the x axis of that graph. Then what is I? y axis amplitude of that sine wave. This y axis represents amplitude of the sine wave. So, that you could see the positions of these words y transformers are better than LSTMs with the small green dotted circles. 
right? If you look at these two words, what is your analysis? The transfer and dam, both are the words with the same amplitude of the sine wave. What does it mean to the machine? They both are same. For the machine, they both are the same words, but they are not same. Similarly, the remaining two words Y and R also having the same amplitude on the sine curve. For the machine, these two are the pair of words which are similar, but it is not true. Now, this variable dimension 2i by d modal this will come into the picture this will play a major role now the sine and cos waves will be built for every dimension now this is the sine wave built for one dimension next these are the sine waves built for one more dimension and one more dimension for three dimensions i have shown you the sine wave which was built for the position of these words now if you have a look on this the word transformer and dam which are having the same amplitude at the first sine wave change their positions did you find a small variance between those two amplitudes at the second dimension just observe those two same words in the third dimension my problem solved this is the power of this equation in calculating positional encoding clear now a combination of merging all these three positional values into a vector i'll get my positional embedding vector for the word transformer and the word than which initially machine considered as the similar words you got how the positional embedding will be calculated fine now these positional embedding vectors will be added to our embedding vectors which is generated for each word and combining yes i had shown you with the sign curve for this even positions every even position of this positional vector we will use the sign curve for every odd position we will use the cos square i think i found the difference with the previous am i let us check again whatever the paper that we discussed in the morning session i think in the reverse let us confirm that one right so that these two are the two for two different equations which we can use for calculating the even and odd positions of the positional vector for each token then these positional vectors will be added to embedding vectors of each token of the input sequence so that i can get combining combined output of both this embedding and the positional layer sorry what is this but yeah positional encoding layer output this is the final outcome of the first two layers of the encoder part now this will be feeded to feed it to what first let us start with the head attention attention head don't go for multi first initial it will be feeded to the it will be the input to the attention head then what is the attention head right now is doing let's have a brief already we discussed we we'll have a brief this attention head will take three parameters query key value this is a concept which brought from the information retrieval system where given a random query of information retrieval it will generate the key with some sort of pre processing now using this key it will do the valid useful search meaningful search in the database and the respective corresponding value will be written back to the system this is how the information will be stored and retrieved in the irs apply the same mechanism to our attention head 
with a bit modification giving the same sentence why transformers are better than lstms to each of these three elements query key and value what it identified understood that same sentence is to be given parallel to query key value right now this is the input to the head attention attention head i should not keep this multi head right now it should be the head attention head only okay fine so this query key values which is input to the linear layers which will do some processing and then will be given to the what it is called the scaled dot product attention layer this will be given to the scaled dot product attention layer what happens in this it has to capture the meaningful relation between one word with every other word in the sentence clear the job of the head attention attention head is capturing the meaningful relation of each word in the sequence with every other word in the sequence let's see how it is going to be done here is a matrix multiplication operation will be done between q and k three parameters we are having q k v we had a discussion in the morning multiplication or the dot product multiplication is q and k transpose or else the dot product between q and k the rows are the all the words in the okay the rows are all the words in the input sequence and the columns are also all the words in the input sequence because both q and k are same now what is this matrix values is represent just observe the values here you can see some values 93 42 55 like this some values which represents the relationship between every word in the sequence to every other word in the sequence this is the what the outcome of this matrix multiplication operation of this particular layer then in the next step what will happen is this is what we are calling it as attention filter okay now this will be given to the scaling layer we need to scale all these values into a particular range now you can see the values in the range 21 point to 22 point all are in between within 1 to 50 only scaling is a normal regular process to fix into some particular range then how the scaling is done this is operation behind this value of q and k t transpose divided by the square root of number of dimension what is the denominator value in my case right now for my example what is the denominator value square root of dk ha huh? 5 or 6 dimensions yeah ah correct right okay so thus you are getting the values then it will be given to the soft max layer which will generate the probabilities of how each word is related to all the other words now you can see here in this matrix you can see here better and better is having the probability one it's a step by step process of calculating the relationship between each word in one sent uh, each word of the uh, each word in the sentence to every other word in the sentence this is all the effect of all these layers which is comes under the scaled dot product attention layer step by step illustration right okay now this will be multiplied with the actual v this probabilities generated from this softmax will be multiplied with the third component of this information retrieval system or the third parameter of this head attention attention head v this is what actually called as attention with three parameters 
Q, K, V, query, K and key and value. This is what the formula. Okay. Right. Now what the researchers has done is, you can see here, single head. Now what they did is repeatedly multiple layers. This is what called multi head attention. Multiple times by concatenating the results of all these heads, this is the concat layer which do that job. This will be processed, this entire result will be passed to the linear layer so that you can observe here the parameter W0 is added. For the concatenated outcome with added W, it will go to the linear layer. We just had seen a simple some box, rectangular box with the name of multi head attention in the encoder part at the bottom, right? What had happened behind that particular small square box is this, right? Now this is the outcome of the multi head attention which is given, which is the outcome of this multi head attention layer of the encoder part. Now this output will be passed to the add and normalization layer along with the residual connections that is nothing but the previous layer output is also used. You can see here this one. And then it is given to the feed forward network and then to the add and normalization layer and the finally what it is generating card encoded or embedded query and the key values will get generated. This is the complete, what is this Q and K consisting of is complete internal representation of the input sequence which is given to the encoder part, right, encoder part is over. Let us move on to the decoder, focus on decoder, decoder is also having first two layers of the decoder is also the same. Embedding layer and positional encoding layer. But what is the input for this decoder? Where is the input? No, it is not directly. That is what I said. In the morning Nielsen session, we had discussed till the part of the encoder clearly. Now I am going to focus on, I am going to give you an idea about how the decoder part is also this, so that you can continue for writing the paper. Yeah, obviously. You just have to illustrate this, now you can write the paper, right? Okay, listen. So for the encoder, you just recollect. For the encoder, what was given is the input sequence, why transformers are better than LSTMs were converted into the embedded representation with the added positional encoder is given feed -in. So encoder knows all the words in the input sequence, so that it is able to generate the relation between every word with the other words in the sequence using that matrix, what is called attention filter matrix. But where is the width? what is the input for the decoder? Alting. What is your target? They use attention is the target, that is what is to be predicted. In transformer mechanism along with those tokens, two special tokens will be there for the target. Those are one is start, second is, if it is start obviously there would be end right. Two special tokens, one is start and second is end. The target will get starts with the first token called STAR to start. This will be feeded as an input to the decoder embedding layer. The starting word of the to be predicted sentence, starting token START is the default. It will be the input to the decoder part. Whatever the job is done by the head attention layer in the decoder encoder part, the same will be done even in the decoder part also with the token START. 
Please remember, with the token STRT only. Right? By considering this STRT is the key, value and query itself. In the encoder part, I consider the entire sequence why attention transformers are better than LSTM as a key, query and value. But here in the decoder part, this starting token start is nothing but the query, nothing but the key, nothing but the value for the head attention which is there and then multi head attention what I explained in the previous slide. So, it will give the representation of the beginning token to be protected, but what is the decoder job? It has to predict the next word in the sequence which is an answer for the input sequence given to the encoder part. So, obviously in order to, to predict the next word in the output sequence, I need what was identified and captured in the encoder part. So, whatever is generated as an output of the encoder part now will come into the picture. For the another multi head attention layer which is in the decoder part, this output from this will be feeded as an input. Is it clear now? So, decoder part starts at the multi head attention with the starting token itself. In the first multi head attention layer, in the second multi head attention layer, sorry, layer, in this at this particular step, the output of the encoder part is joined. Now, this multi head attention layer is capable. Is it sufficient? What I need to do with the previous input information? I have to predict the next word for the current word. What is my current starting token, which is the output of first multi head attention layer? So, now this also will be added. Did you observe what is the input for the second multi head attention layer in the decoder part? Fine. Okay. Now, rest of the thing is no need to explain. Now, I had starting is the keyword first token and the internal representation of the input sequence in the form of the Q and K, these two parameters, and my current word is in the form of the V. Using these three together, my multi head attention layer, now as a multi head attention layer, I could be able to find out the meaningful relationship between current word start and the next word to be predicted using the basis of the information taken from the input sequence. That is what Sir said. At 10th layer and 20th layer, you cannot capture that relationships. Going on 80th layer, this is what at the first level of multi head attention layer, I am not able to capture that, but going on to the second multi head attention layer, I am able to capture now, because I have the knowledge of the encoder output, right. This is the complete layer, then this output with the residual connection is given to the add norm layer and this output will be given to the feed forward neural network in the next layer. And again with the residual connections, it is given to the added normal layer. The final outcome of this decoder part is what? It is given to the linear layer. What does it mean? What is that? It is a vector representation. What is the final outcome of this decoder part is meaningful relationships with all the words to be predicted in the target sentence. That information representation is given to the linear layer which will generate a vector representation. Now, this vector representation is the input to the soft max layer which will give the probabilities of the words to be predicted in the output sequence. This is the outcome. From this, 
the word with the highest probability will be the output of the softmax layer. So that that will comes into the next token in the target sequence. All this thing what had happened at the time step? Zero. It started with the starting token start and predicted next word after the starting token to be in the target sequence. I am in line, I am getting the right sentences and my answer to my chatbot, right my query, okay. Then x the time step t equal to 1, what had happened? Both those tokens, first and second token are feeded as the input. It is a continuous because I need to get the next word, next word to be predicted in my target sequence. Now this two tokens together are feed added to the decoder part and same is the repetitive task and next word identified is the word with the probability 0 0.02 is the uses. This has happened at the time step t equal to 2. Okay. Now, here is the small problem. For the input how it is getting this probabilities, getting the probabilities behind this is the same thing, the job of multi head attention layer. Matrix is to be calculated between Q and K. But the question here is, how does the decoder knows this, the words to be predicted? I have not feed it this, they are using transformer in the, are these words are there in the input sequence? Why? transformers are better than LSTM, this is my input sequence. Did my model or the encoder part saw these words, they are using attentions or they uses attentions? No. Then how it will build? This attention filter, who? Decoder. Then how the decoder will build this attention filter is the question mark. For the encoder, because I fed it the input, entire input sequence, I know as an encoder, I know all the words in my sequence, so I can be able to build the matrix multiplication. Here in the decoder, I do not know what are the words going to be predicted until it is been predicted. Then how the decoder will generate this attention filter? The answer for this. Multi head mechanism in the attention filter transformers will assign a parameter or the value called minus infinity. See this one. At the first time set, only the word time step g t equal 0, only one word was predicted. And the next time step, uses were predicted. You can see that right top corner is empty. For every next word being predicted, new word being predicted, I do not know the value of attention filter value for the previous word which has been predicted. That is the reason why empty. Even for the word self also. Down how it will be handled is transformers will assign a value minus infinity as a transformer weight to these tokens which have been predicted in the previous which are which are unknown till assign the weight parameter minus infinity so that the tender matrix will be filled this is how it will generate the attention filter decoder now when it is passed to the softmax layer at the last level, it will generate the probability value 0 for those positions or the characters. Got answer? Okay. How this was implemented? This was implemented by a small correction and this scaled dot product of attention layer in between the scale and the softmax layers by introducing a layer called optional that is called the masked layer. This is the job of that masking done by the decoder part. Now, 
this layer is called as masked multi head attention layer that's the reason why we are calling it as masked multi head attention layer that is fine okay so next in the next time step t equal to 3 those three will be feeded and the attention is the next word generated and the next time step all these three were given and it ended with the ending token and this is how attention self attention mechanism works in the transformers am i clear right so i'm just recapping with the things to remember attention head uses three values query key and value to capture the meaningful relationship between each word in the sequence to every other word in the sequence so that it could do the much focus on the relationship between the words will capture the more meaning important features and the residual connections in the network will give will maintain the stableness of the gradients so that the vanishing gradient problem will be avoided and the third thing is the capability of self attention mechanism makes the transformer to learn the long term dependence let's have a look on what are the different transformer with the self attention and transformer learn sorry transfer learning mainly there are two models are there one is the gpt generative pre trained transformers they uses the decoder part of the transformer it's an overview i'm giving in the next lecture session of llns we are going to i'm going to talk on gpt okay and another transformer with the self attention and transfer learning mechanism built was but bi directional encoder representation from transformer will be the first in the next day session tomorrow session first lecture in the tomorrow session you understood basics of these two fine so both are the transformers with the self attention and transfer learning just have a look on these applications well known applications of this transformer or the nlp tasks we can perform using the transformers text generation text summarization answering questions text classification entity recognition and language translation which is a few applications of the transformers in order to implement all these applications obviously we need a one framework i'm going to introduce you the hugging face framework how many of you worked with the hugging face can you raise up the hands two three members only i'll give you a glance brief glance and then how to use this hugging face for performing the nlp tasks and i'll go to the case study <coughs> the beauty of the hugging face this ecosystem consisting of mainly three components one is the hub libraries and inference api this is these three components together we will call it as the hugging face ecosystem main components core components and if you see the core libraries of this hugging face data sets tokenizers and transformers are the core libraries the link is provided here this is so simple huggingface.co/docs it will give you clear documentation about all these core libraries and ecosystem features of the ecosystem hugging face ecosystem you can have a look on this particular slide there are mainly three core libraries i said data sets tokenizers and then transformer these three are the three main core libraries of the hugging face how they will be used this you can see here from the data sets you can load and process the data sets and tokenizers the input sequence using the different tokenizers which are available in the hugging face core library then we can load the models and train and inference the models using the transformers and you can load the matrix and evaluate the models from the again data sets thus these three are the core libraries of the hugging face next important thing is pipeline hugging face pipeline is the main thing what is meaning of pipeline can anybody any any one of you who are you working with this hugging face can define what is pipeline not no idea you can't define but you used it for which task 
okay fine no problem let's have an idea okay so we will be using this hugging face pipeline i already told you in the last session nlp session what is the meaning of the pipeline it is a sequence of steps to be processed in the same way from one stage output will be given as a feeded as input in the next stage right okay here coming to the concept of hugging face pipeline it is a function which takes two inputs one is the nlp task which task you wanted to perform and raw text on which text you wanted to perform the task it will give you the result of that particular task as an output so simple to use so internally what it will do is pre process the text which is given to then pipeline with the task which whatever is mentioned it will choose the model and this pre processed data on which you wanted to work that's what i said transfer learning concept model trained on huge data set and corpus will be used for downstreaming task that's what i am going to show you right so that model that particular model will be given this pre processed text and the post process text or the information will be generated as the output of this particular task by the pipeline i'll give you a quick view on this how to use this hugging face pipeline just have a look on this one hope it is visible to you all okay so as a first step we need to install the transformers with the command pip install transformers you can do this one once the transformer import installed then we have to import the pipeline from transformers import pipeline is the query and the command supposed to give to import the pipeline so as i said pipeline is a function which takes the nlp task and the raw text together which will generate the outcome of the task you can see here i wanted to find i wanted to find the sentiment of a particular sentence or the text this is my task sentiment of a text what i shown in the last nlp session for a twitter data given a tweet it has to identify whether it is having the positive sentiment or negative or neutral or neutral right so this is the task i wanted to perform so i already downloaded imported my pipeline with this command now this pipeline is the method called up with by passing the task this is the nlp task i need to perform i have shown you nlp hugging face pipeline will be given two parameter one is the raw text second is the task the task here is sentiment analysis fine okay now the pipeline is called sent analyzer was created and the sent analyzer is now passed with the text we are happy to introduce the pipeline to try to the transformers this is the text raw text i am passing it to the pipeline function which performs the sentiment analysis now you can see the result what it has given to me can you see this does it generated the label sentiment of my word right positivity with the 99% score it has written score also it will return okay now if you have a look on this one you can see here no model was specified and supplied and defaulted to what is this model name this is the transformer model you understood what is transfer learning i am doing now this is the model which was built already pre trained for doing the task of you can see this distilled bird based on case refined tuned sst to english right okay now another task is text classification is similar to the sentiment analysis only given a text it has to classify right so for this what i did is the task which is posted to the pipeline is text classification and the 
raw text given is the items in this restaurant are awesome what is the sentiment in this statement positivity only right so my text classifier classifier has to give the same result yes i got it positive with the score of 99 with the model of same digital word base uncaged but what i am doing right now is i changed my model by specifying the model parameter roberta large mnli from the hugging face models you can see this one from the document you can see what are the different models which are available if you want i can show you that just for a while this is hugging face site as i said the core library is hub inference api and the transformers ecosystem consists of all these are the ecosystems in this if you look at the models it will give you the different tasks here you can see in the left pan natural language processing task text classification is here if i click on this particular task it will show you the what are the different models okay you can see the description of all these models just clicking on this model you could see the description of all these models how this was built and everything and the api how to work with this model also you can see from here and just copy this name here from this copy model you can get the name of the model so easy to get the name of the model so that in my classification of the second classifier i specify the model roberta large mnli once I, that i could do with the passing the parameter model equal to for the same pipeline along with the nlp task okay once this is given now you can see what is the outcome of this model can you see what is the output of that model i got it neutral with the earlier mode digital word on case positive there is a difference is there what do you understood from this what are you supposed to do tell me same is the task my task is just it has to classify my sentence this the food in the site uh, restaurant was awesome it has to be classified i applied the transfer learning from two models with one model i got positive label with one other model i got neutral now the here is the point of fine tuning to get the right results okay fine this is another example i got a very good results and look at here another example i tried i posted a positive text instead of a single line of text this time i posted a paragraph information i'm just reading for an overview dear amazon last week i understand that something is then and unfortunately when i opened the package i discovered my horror the meaning is the meaning of this paragraph is i placed an order in amazon one particular item but i received some other items i got shocked about it i'm not happy with that order what i received i posted this message or the text to the classifier and try to predict that what i got is is it meaningful it's a negative review for the service provided by the amazon i got it i'm succeeding using that particular model fine next you can see question answering okay i'm going to show you with this so the pipeline i'm going to use with the task of question answering and this is the text context i'm giving question answer for questions to be posted the model has to return the answers right on what basis you are posing the questions context for the task of question answering context is to be provided to the pipeline right this is the context which i am giving the total fee of services paid by the company something something financial which is paying some information you can see here 
the statutory auditors of the company auditors of the company and other firms in the network entity of this one statutory and something something on march 21st 2021 59.73 crores were paid concisely i am saying this some financial transaction of a company was given here right this is the context i am giving for this question answering task pipe qqa how i am giving how you supposed to give that you need to look on this one two parameters it is taking one is the it's a dictionary one is the question and second is the context the context which has been created is given as the context value of the context key of the dictionary and the question what i posted is what is the total fee paid by the company to auditors you just listen up one second listen up the context in the context given itself there is no exact sentence the total amount paid by the right but i asked the pose the question what is the total fee you can see the context did i is it there total fee for all services it was started like this but what the question i posed around this context is what is the total fee paid by the company so i got the reply is did i get the right answer yes here what is called the prompt engineering is required the question what you are posting is nothing but the prompting message phrasing the prompts is very very important will play the crucial role in extracting the information the next question which i posed is in which year the company paid do you remember march 21 right so i got this answer for the same context march 31st 2021 So this is how different. What is the face value of the non-convertible debenture? It replied in different ways. You can give the results. Now, text generator. Question answer is one thing. Text generator is also another model is there, which is used for generating text. When you wanted to build a chatbot like applications, you can use this one with the prompting messages and using the text generator model. corresponding to the prompting message is the input now again you have to analyze this one how the chatbot i started my discussion of transformer with the chatbot only right given an input sequence of why transformers are same as like this for the model generator text generator model you have to give the prompt messages for the given prompting messages it will generate the internal representation by the encoder based on this the output response to the prompt message will be delivered by the decoder part so different likewise not only text generation text summarization only the thing is for the pipeline you supposed to specify the nlp task whatever you wanted to do then it will give you a beautiful results this is we are using already existing models with the hugging face pipeline second thing is you have to work with your own data here if you see in all these example okay if you see on all these example i posted a random sample text the same thing if you wanted to work on your own database obviously what is required pre processing for that database is required okay in 2 minutes i'm going to wind up just have a look on this one simple example of this text summarization or article summarization on cnn daily mail data set okay it's a news article generation site website which is having the data you can see here how to get the data sets this is the command to install the data sets from the transformers once the data sets are installed then we have to download these data sets by the command load underscore data set load underscore data set cnn daily mail is the data set i wanted to install 
The version is also specified here. It is a continuous daily generated data set. I am using the version of 3.0.0. That version you can specify for getting the latest data sets. If you look at these data sets, can you have a look on this data set? Generally, we have seen these data sets, how they are looking like a pandas data frame still now, right? Just have a look on how this data set is, structure of this data set, right? Just have a look on this structure of this data set, CNN Daily Mail data set. It is a data set dictionary which consisting of three components, train, validation and testing. Each of this component is again a data set, okay, which is also a list of a, a tuple of dictionary which consisting of features and number of rows. You have to analyze how this data was structured to extract the data back. Here in this case study, extracting the data is important, not the performing the task of text summarization. It is a so simple job. Once the article is extracted from the data set, passing it to the, passing it to the summarization pipeline function is sufficient. Okay. This is how the data was extracted here. Features will give the values of highlights and IDs. There are three components, article, highlights and IDs. Now I want this article only. Here is the sample article, I took it here, sample. From the training sample of second index position, this is the article taken. Menopolis. This article is representing what is Menopolis, it is a bridge, a river bridge is there that was broken on one Wednesday and a car along with uh, a person along with his car fell into the wall, sorry fell into the well and met with an accident and something has happened, accidental information that had happened in the Menopolis city, right. Now once this is done, you can just, I am going to the last part. This is what? Summarization task was specified and the model was specified. This time I took the Facebook CNN model. Facebook bought large CNN. You try with the different models to see the outputs. Okay. Then this particular article was passed, the sample article and asked to generate a summarized text with minimum length 50 and maximum length 150 characters and this is what my summarization result. The whole bridge from one side of the Minipo, sorry, Mississippi to the other just completely gave away and this driver, Gary is a driver, I probably had a 30 to 35 foot free fall and there is a car in this water and something something. something. This is the summary for that entire article has been generated. What is important thing you need to understand from this case study is how you need to apply the transformer model of a specific task to your data. In order to do that, data pre-processing is required, capturing and extracting data is important. Okay, right. Any queries from this session? I am going to end up this session with this task. Any queries from your side? Hope you understood this decoder part of this transformer. How many of you are ready to write the paper, complete the second part of the paper which is shown in the morning? Come on, try out. Anybody is ready, I will help you. Anybody is ready, I will help you. Okay, I will wait for today. Very good. If anybody is ready, I will help you. That's what. Already I wrote a similar type of paper in this uh, towards data science with an illustration. So I can help you in this one. Fine. Okay. Let's meet in the afternoon session.